Hello there. The provinces of Guizhou and Guangxi in China had a terrifying period in their history. Numerous horrifying murder cases occurred in these areas causing shock among the people. The serial killer committed 16 crimes and killed 15 people over a span of six years. The victims were all women who were brutally raped and murdered. The perpetrators' methods were highly cunning, allowing them to evade capture by law enforcement multiple times. This string of crimes remained unsolved until a fortunate girl who escaped the killer's clutches revealed the motive behind the perpetrator's actions, stating that he harbored a deep hatred for women. In December 1994, in the city of Nanshou, Guangxi province, an elderly woman was walking up the mountain to pick vegetables when she accidentally stepped on a decaying corpse. Startled, she dropped her basket and ran away. Soon after, the police received a report from the elderly woman. Upon receiving the notification, the police quickly arrived at the crime scene to investigate. The victim was identified as a woman in her 20s. The body was found lying face up on the grass naked and showing signs of rape. There were marks of strangulation on the neck, bulging eyes, and a protruding tongue leading the police to deduce that the killer had strangled the victim to death. The decomposed body was heavily affected by insects and emitted a putrid odor. Based on the level of decomposition, forensic experts determined that the victim had been dead for a considerable amount of time. What was peculiar was the absence of any signs of struggle on the victim's clothes. Furthermore, the clothes were neatly folded next to the body. Due to the body being exposed to the elements, there were few leads as it had been affected by the weather. Fortunately, the police found a small amount of the perpetrator's semen remaining in the victim's vagina. However, at that time, DNA technology was still a relatively new concept for the small city of Nanshu, and they lacked the resources to apply such techniques. The local police tried to investigate the identity of the victim, but had no success as the body had completely decomposed. Posters with the victim's description were posted throughout the city, but there was no response for several days. Not only could they not determine the victim's identity, but they also had no leads on the suspect. After burying the body, the police closed the case of the mysterious murder in 1994 due to the lack of any leads to continue the investigation. Three years later, another similar case occurred in the region with the same modus operandi as the murder three years prior. The leads were once again erased and there were no reports of missing persons making it impossible for the police to identify the suspect. This case also reached a dead end and the two unusual deaths left the residents living in fear and vigilance. Guizhou province was deeply troubled by the ongoing series of crimes. In 1998 and 1999, four more victims were recorded. Then in 2005, more murders with the same modus operandi took place in the city of Duquan, Guizhou province. The Nanshan police sent semen samples from the previous two victims to Guizhou for testing. The test results were shocking as they revealed that the same person was responsible for both cases. Dukon, a city known as a paradise with beautiful mountains and majestic landscapes, is home to a diverse ethnic population. However, this beauty and romance quickly faded into oblivion as people and tourists were afraid to set foot there due to the fear of losing their lives. The series of cases not only shocked Dukon and Nanshu, but also created a strong shock nationwide. The media continuously focused on these two cities, creating significant pressure on the police. The Public Security Bureau issued an urgent letter requesting local authorities to closely monitor the investigation process. Patrol work was also intensified to prevent further harm to individuals until the perpetrator was apprehended. One question arose, why were there only fingerprints from the victims on their clothes at the crime scene? This indicated that the perpetrator may have used violence to force the victims to undress. The discovery of a series of similar deaths left the police extremely perplexed. Firstly, the perpetrator left very few clues. And secondly, most of the deceased were found on high hills after several months or years. The long discovery time led to severe decomposition of the bodies, some of which were reduced to just a pile of bones. Recognizing that they couldn't solve the case independently, the police departments of Guizhou and Guangxi provinces formed a joint task force comprising dozens of members. After extensive research, the police finally discovered an anomaly some of the murdered women carried condoms with them. Initially, the police didn't pay much attention to this and believed that these women had open views on sex. However, the experts thought differently. Dukan is a small city with many ethnic minority residents, who have relatively simple lifestyles and are not accustomed to extravagant living like in larger cities. If there were only one or two victims carrying condoms, it could be considered a coincidence, but the majority of them did. Experts suspected that the victims were involved in the prostitution industry. 
Following this line of thinking, the police began investigating hair salons, barber shops, and massage parlors throughout the city. Indeed, this investigative approach proved to be correct. In a short period, they quickly identified the identities of the victims. It turned out that they were all sex workers who primarily operated on the streets at night. This explained why the victims did not resist. The police speculated that the perpetrator used the pretext of purchasing sex and lured these girls to desolate mountainous areas to engage in sexual activities before killing them. Because it was their source of income, the victims would not resist and would even voluntarily undress and neatly fold their clothes aside. Most of these girls were very young, living alone, and their families knew little about their daily activities. Even their colleagues did not dare to call the police when they went missing because their line of work was illegal and they couldn't expose themselves. The perpetrator seemed very cunning, with highly sophisticated actions and meticulous handling of the crime scene. According to the deduction, the perpetrator and the victims were not acquainted, so it is difficult to understand why the perpetrator would resort to murdering them after achieving their sexual motive. Many believe that perhaps the perpetrator did not want to pay for services rendered leading to such a horrific crime. Up to the current point, there have been 11 victims sending shivers down everyone's spines. The public is both terrified by the degeneration of the criminal and skeptical of the actual capabilities of the police. While public opinion continues to stir around 2 a.m. on November 26, 2000, the police received a report from a woman named Xiao Diem. At that time, she was disheveled, with a frantic face, rushing in to report that someone wanted to kill her. According to Diem's account, after leaving a gambling den and preparing to catch a ride home, an unfamiliar man approached her. Diem simply thought he was one of the gamblers she had encountered in the casino, so she wasn't cautious. The man appeared gentle, spoke softly, and wore a railway worker uniform. After a while of conversation, the man proposed accompanying Diem for an all-night gambling session at a nearby den. He said that the players in that den were unskilled but had a lot of money, and with a few tricks, one could win tens of thousands of yuan in one night. These words delighted Diem, who then asked where the gambling den was. The man said it was right behind the train station, not far away. Without paying much attention, Diem left with the stranger. After walking a distance, the man veered towards the mountain. Diem asked why there was a gambling den on the mountain, and the man said it had been there for several years, which Diem had no knowledge of. Doubts arose in her mind, but the thought of the large sum of money she was about to gain made her unintentionally follow along. Halfway through, Diem realized the surroundings were pitch black and became frightened. She asked, where are you taking me? At that moment, the man revealed a wicked expression, chuckled and said, you've been deceived. Quickly undress or you'll die a gruesome death. Despite being terrified, Diem tried her best to regain composure and pleaded, please don't kill me. I'm young and don't want to die. The man remained silent, then gradually approached her. Diem sternly warned him that if he did anything, she would scream and people would come leaving him with no escape. The man sneered at Diem and said, Go ahead, scream louder. It would be fantastic if a group of people were buried here. Diem desperately wanted to resist, but realized she was no match for this strong man. She had to save herself. Diem didn't resist, and endured the torment of her body to satisfy his animalistic desire. She knew she was about to be killed, so she immediately knelt down, begged, and promised not to tell anyone about this incident. Hearing these words, he suddenly softened and didn't immediately harm her. Instead, he lit a cigarette and started talking to her. He said he hated women, that women didn't deserve to exist. He genuinely wanted to eliminate all women in the world. Not only that, he proudly boasted that he had killed more than a dozen people. This statement terrified Diem. While pretending to listen to his story, she also glanced around searching for an opportunity to escape. By chance, his mobile phone which he had placed on the ground rang and instinctively he moved the distance away to answer it. Seizing the moment, Diem quickly hid in nearby bushes and he mistakenly thought she had fled down the mountain, so he hastily pursued her. On a cold and windy night, Diem persevered and sat quietly for a while, saved by her petite figure. Determining that the assailant had gone far away, Diem immediately rushed to report the incident, luckily escaping the clutches of death. The police requested a description of the suspect's appearance and voice, and based on Diem's testimony, they sketched a portrait of the perpetrator. Unfortunately, due to the darkness and Diem's excessive fear, the description became difficult. Eventually, they managed to draw a portrait, but there were noticeable differences between the sketch and the real person. Subsequently, the police investigated over 7,000 suspects within the railway system. However, the results were not promising as it seemed that this suspect was not a railway employee at all. The attire he wore was merely a clever disguise. 
Despite having witnesses, the case did not make any new progress. The director of the police department was eager and demanded that the special forces handle the case thoroughly within the specified deadline. Amidst a vast sea of people where criminals could hide anywhere, the special forces faced tremendous pressure. On May 8, 2001, DM suddenly rushed to the police station saying that she had spotted the culprit shopping on the street. This information turned out to be the key that unlocked the entire case. It was known that after the near-fatal rape incident, DM was filled with intense resentment and desired revenge against the perpetrator. She wandered through the streets hoping to confront him and seek justice for herself. Dukan was a small city with a population of only about 100,000 people, so DM believed that one day she would surely encounter this depraved individual again. Indeed, heaven did not disappoint. In the morning of the 8th, amidst a bustling market, DM unexpectedly came face to face with him. He was leisurely strolling with a woman and a child. Using her intelligence, she silently followed them. When she saw them seated at a table in a restaurant, she immediately ran a few hundred meters to the police station to report. The police hurriedly arrived at the provided address, and upon seeing the suspect, he trembled nervously. A police officer ordered him to come with them to the station for investigation, but he quickly fled. However, the entire area around the restaurant was surrounded. Realizing that escape was impossible, he grabbed a knife from the table and threatened a customer. The police refused to back down and arrested both individuals, assuming that the woman and child were his family. When he saw his terrified wife and child, he gave up resistance and agreed to go to the station with them. Before leaving, he declared to his wife that the police had arrested the wrong person and his wife, believing him, shouted in protest. During the interrogation, he constantly displayed a defiant attitude. He claimed his name was Guolong Hai and denied any involvement in the crimes. Surprisingly, he had a previous conviction for rape. When questioned, Hai told the police that it was a thing of the past and he was young and ignorant at the time. He argued that his past actions couldn't be used against him in the present. Unable to bear it any longer, Diem ran up and begged the police to speak directly with him. You wretched person! Don't you even admit it? She exclaimed. Even if you turn to ashes, I can still recognize you. Hai pretended not to know Diem and believed that she had a mental problem. The investigation continued relentlessly for several days, but the suspect stubbornly refused to confess. To provide more convincing evidence, the police obtained semen samples found on the victims to compare with Hai's DNA. The results were not surprising as they were a, a complete match. Guolong Hai pondered for a while and realized he couldn't lie any longer. He straightforwardly admitted that he alone was responsible for the series of murders. His first words were, Zhang Jun claims to be great, but I don't think so. They are a gang that could only kill 10 people while I alone can handle 15 people. Zhang Jun mentioned here is the person referred to as the CEO of a company specializing in murder, robbery, and a series of shocking murder cases in 1994 in China. This statement shocked everyone present in the courtroom. According to the murderer's account, in addition to the 12 cases in Nanshu and Duquan, he also committed a murder in Luzhou, Dexindu, and Jinjiang. In total, he caused 16 incidents and killed 15 people. Guolong Hai was born in 1955 into a family with a long-standing cultural tradition in Guangxi province. His father was a veteran revolutionary cadre who worked in the railway industry after retiring from the military. Contrary to his father's character, Hai exhibited a bad temperament from a young age. After completing high school, he frequently engaged in fights and acts of violence. Instead of continuing his education, he decided to work in a weapons warehouse arranged by his family. In 1981, Hai married a kind and gentle female factory worker. After a year of marriage, they had a child. However, during his wife's pregnancy and childbirth, Hai was unable to fulfill his sexual desires for a long time, so he decided to have an affair. He then became infatuated with a beauty named Xiao Liang, who worked in the factory. This young, beautiful and charming girl aroused Hai's desire. Of course, Liang rejected him because Hai was already married and poor. After failing to confess his feelings, he decided to force himself upon her one night, but discovered Liang and the director struggling on the grass. A few days later, Hai threatened to expose the incident to the public. At that time, virginity was highly valued, so Liang was afraid and quickly knelt down begging Hai to keep the secret. He took advantage of the situation to demand a sexual relationship with Liang, who had no other choice but to close her eyes and comply. However, in a drunken state, Hai broke his promise and revealed the secret to a friend. This friend, feeling sorry for Liang, immediately reported it to the factory's security office. Hai was caught by the security department for attempting to seduce a married woman. During the investigation, Liang admitted 
that she and the director had engaged in an inappropriate relationship. However, Hai's use of threats to force Liang to comply and commit sexual assault was considered one of the most serious crimes punishable by either execution or a minimum of 10 years in prison. After being arrested and sentenced to 10 years in prison, Hai showed positive rehabilitation behavior. Thanks to his personal changes, his sentence was reduced to seven years and he was released in 1990. Upon returning home, Hai no longer had the same job as before, which made him feel helpless. Fortunately, his wife stood by his side, a simple and honest woman whom he had once looked down upon. In 1992, Hai worked as a hired worker in a state-owned agricultural company. Just two years later, he was promoted to deputy general director due to his outstanding performance helping his wife and children live a more prosperous life. In the eyes of others, Hai was moving in the right direction and actively correcting his past mistakes. However, deep inside his mind, he still held deep resentment towards Zhao Liang and the friend who had led him to prison. He secretly vowed to make them pay one day. Hai bought a sharp knife and decided to go to the factory to settle the score with Liang and his former friend. However, to his surprise, Liang had long since left and his friend had also quit his job. Disappointed by the lost opportunity for revenge, Hai became angry and a crazy thought emerged in his mind that women deserve to die. In December 1994, while Hai was working in Liuzhou, Guangxi he met a girl with the last name Song who resembled Liang. Hai approached her and started a conversation. When he heard the girl speak in a provocative manner, he became enraged and conceived the idea of eliminating her. Taking advantage of his wealth, he lured the victim to a deserted hill. After having sexual intercourse, she demanded more money, but he wondered why she cared about a few small coins after such a tiring climb. Seeing her greed, he struck and strangled her until she died. Killing someone for the first time, he felt confused and unsure. Initially, Hai only intended to render the girl unconscious, but unfortunately it resulted in a murder case. Faced with the motionless body, he became frantic, leaving the corpse behind and running down the mountain. However, over half a year passed and the police couldn't find the perpetrator, which excited Hai. His level of depravity continued to increase. Not long after Hai killed another woman in a hair salon in Nancho, Guangxi and went on to kill three more people consecutively. With no signs from the police, Hai became bolder and within six years he had killed 15 people. He even excitedly shared his joy with the police after each murder. Despite having killed multiple people, Hai showed no remorse and even planned to expand the scale and number of victims. Among all the victims, Hai remembered the faces of three women, including the first victim and Zhao Dim who had managed to escape. The remaining person was particularly noteworthy, named Zhao Ngon, a 13-year-old girl suffering from multiple personality disorder. On November 15, 2001, the People's Court of Dukon City issued a verdict that Guolong Hai was guilty of rape and intentional homicide. Based on the indictment, he admitted in court that he deserved punishment and did not appeal. From the first crime onwards, Hai committed 16 cases of rape and 15 cases of murder, often approaching his victims by disguising himself as a polite director or friendly railway employee. In a closed trial, Hai was sentenced to death, and the sentence was to be carried out on January 13, 2002. A few hours before the execution, when the prison asked him about his final wish, Hai, who had always been stubborn and refused to meet any family members, broke down in tears and said, I want to meet my wife and child. She has always been good to me. I have wronged her and my son. Fortunately, after all, the heinous criminal was finally caught in the clutches of the law. On January the 13th, 2002, in the courtroom, a round of applause and loud laughter erupted when the guns were fired with the exception of his gentle wife, who burst into tears. The perpetrator of the final massacre had paid a high price for his reckless actions, and it was regrettable that Guolong Hai had a good wife but failed to love and appreciate her missing the opportunity. One mistake after another pushed him to the brink of crime. It was the result of his lustful nature that the murderer sowed so many unjust deaths for innocent women. This case also exposed the loopholes in China's legal system. If the perpetrator had been brought to light earlier, there wouldn't have been so many young women losing their lives in the desolate mountains like this. What are your thoughts on today's case? Please comment below the description so that we can discuss together. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support us. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.